I'm Scott Flowers with Cloud Ninjas. Today we're going to talk about the HP ProLiant DL360E Gen 8 server. In this video, we're going to specifically focus on drives, both hard drives and solid state drives. Let's get going. Well, hey, thanks for stopping by today. It's a little bit more about the HP ProLiant DL360E Gen 8 server. Do us a favor, you find anything that helps you in this video, click that like and smash that subscribe. All right, well, this video will be specifically dedicated towards drives. We figured, hey, it's time for a refresh on an old popular server to let you know what's compatible nowadays because the spec sheet is pretty out of date. So what we're gonna do in this video is we're gonna go over the different compatible interfaces. We're gonna talk about the max speeds and the max sizes. And again, we're gonna go off HP spec sheet and tell you what the true max speeds and max sizes are nowadays. Then we're gonna show you how to install them, which is super easy because they're hot plug -in. and then at the end, we're going to show you a cool tool that we like called HD Sentinel that'll show you both power on hours and health scores so you can test your drives, especially since this is an older machine. So let's go ahead and hop into the good stuff. All right, so what drives are compatible with your ProLiant Gen 8 server? Well, you're going to have SATA hard drives, SAS hard drives, SATA solid state drives, and SAS solid state drives. Those are going to be the four types of compatible drives. No, unfortunately, uh, NVMe is not going to work. You cannot pop an NVMe uh, into the backplane, and there is no uh, converter kit or adapter or something to make it work. Uh, so NVMe is not going to work um, on the backplane. So those are going to be your four choices. So what speeds do you get with those choices? So for a SATA hard drive, you get 7.2K RPM. That's what you're going to get with a SAS hard drive. It's going to be a little bit faster. You can get 7.2K, 10K, or up to 15K. Now, I will note, especially since this is an older system, that a used 15K SAS drive, you got to think it's going around 15,000 times a minute. The ball bearings are going to wear out over time. So I would keep a spare in stock because they are known and prevalent to fail. All right, what about a SATA solid state drive? Well, with a SATA solid state drive, you can get six gigabit per second. And with a SAS solid state drive, you can get 12 gigabit per second. So that's going to be the real advantage of a SAS solid state drive is it's going to be faster overall. And all right, so now we know a little bit more about the speeds. Let's talk about the sizes. The sizes really depend on what type of chassis you have, okay? So if you have a small form factor or a 2.5 inch chassis, the drives are gonna look like this. If you have a 3.5 inch or large form factor, the drives are going to look like this. So with the small form factor chassis for a SATA hard drive, uh, HPE spec sheets show two terabytes. That's the most we've put in. I wouldn't be surprised if someone drops a comment down below and says, hey, we've put in four, we put in something higher. With SAS hard drives, uh, HPE spec sheet's gonna show 1.8, we've put in 2.4. And again, I wouldn't be surprised if someone uh, drops comment below and says that they've put in something higher. Um, now, when you go to uh, the large form factors, that's where it gets a little bit different. Both so, uh, show six terabytes for SATA or SAS hard drives on HP spec sheet. We've put in 20 terabytes for both, and I wouldn't be surprised if someone's dropped in 22. Um, so those are, uh, again, older information on the spec sheet, and that was one of the reasons we wanted to do this video, even though this is an older system, to let people know that, yes, you can go off spec from the spec sheet, and you can put in larger drives overall. All right, so what about the solid state drives? For a SATA solid state drive, HPE spec sheet only shows 1.6 terabytes. That's definitely not accurate. I mean, maybe back in the day it was, uh, but right now you can put in a 7.68 terabyte and it's gonna show for SAS only two terabytes for a SAS solid state drive. We've put in 15.3. So yes, you can definitely go much, much higher overall. And again, NVMe isn't compatible. All right, so now we know a little bit more about the different compatible types, the speeds, the sizes. Let's go ahead and show you how to physically install them, which is super easy because they're hot plug-in. And then at the end, we'll show you how to test. All right, I have my ESC gear on, so we're safe to work on our machine. So first thing we're gonna do is remove our old drive. This is just an old uh, 300 gig SAS, which is a great drive, but a little bit obsolete. And one of the things that we uh, recommend when you want to extend the life of a machine, uh, like an older uh, Gen 8, uh, you wanna install SSDs. This will be the best boost in performance to help you overall. So you're just gonna slide this in. It's gonna hook right here and just click it into place, very easy. Uh, I wanted to definitely also show you uh, that ours will come with the correct connector. So if you're ordering upgrades on our site, uh, you will get the correct tray and bracket 
for your Gen 8. So it just clicks right in. Uh, very, very simple, easy install. The other thing I want to note is that if you are using a large form factor chassis, we do have the option on our site where you can buy the converter with the 2.5 inch drive because your SSDs will be 2.5 inch, but you want the whole kit so that you can install it appropriately onto your large form factor chassis. All right, now we're gonna show you how to test with a cool tool called HD Sentinel. Alrighty guys, so I have HD Sentinel pulled up right now. And as you can see, we currently have two drives plugged in. Uh, we have this installed into a storage array where we like to plug in multiple drives at a time so we can test those drives. HD Sentinel is an awesome tool because you can see things like the power on hours, which is great, especially when you're buying used equipment. You can see how long that, that drive has been in use. You don't want to be using drives that have been you know, heavily used because then you have a higher risk of drive failure. Um, and that's one of the reasons why HD Sentinel is such a cool tool. But as you can see, we can just go ahead and plug a drive into the array and it'll automatically populate within the software. Like I said, lots of information. It'll give you health scores of the drives. As you can see, the two we have up top, they have 100% health score, while the one at the bottom has a 99%. So all pretty good. So I hope you guys found this video useful. And if you did, go ahead, smash the subscribe and leave a like. If you're interested in purchasing a custom built server or you're looking to buy some drives, we do have plenty of those in stock. So you can go reach out to us at sales at cloudninjas.com. Sales at cloudninjas.com. Anyways, guys, thank you for stopping by.